G'day, my name's Peter Murphy. I'm from the Preston Environment Group. I live in the Jarrah Forest here in the southwest of WA, my home for nearly 40 years. For over 150 years, the, the forests of WA have been overexploited by the logging industry. Arcadia Forest behind me here is no exception and was logged approximately 80 years ago. But give it another 80 years without human disturbances and it will again function as a natural ecosystem. However, according to the government dam of the logging industry, the Forest Products Commission, Arcadia Forest is ripe again for logging. But this logging operation will be nothing like the logging operation in the past. It's going to be referred to as thinning. That's right, thinning the forest. Thinning forest involves the same infrastructure used as in early logging operations such as bulldozers, roading, articulated truck turnarounds, log landings, skidders and forklifts. Except there is one big difference. Instead of using tree fellers with axes and chainsaws to thin the forest, logging will be carried out with 30 tonne logging machines. It's these logging machines responsible for most of the damage done to the forest ecosystem. The Forest Products Commission reasoning for thinning native forests is twofold. To redesign the forest into a monoculture of one species of eucalypt, jarra, and to help stimulate markets for the logging industries such as firewood, biochar, biomass, or industrial charcoal for the foreign known silicon smelter. Once the machines have thinned the forest, then there's the follow-up thinning procedures such as poisoning, notching with herbicides, to kill competing trees or shrubs that inhibit pole stand growth, that is jarra trees that grow nice and straight and fat and perfect for the next round of logging expected within 40 to 50 years. Poisoning is then followed by a regeneration burn where most of the forest understory is incinerated. Regeneration burns also incinerate dead standing poison trees, habitat trees, logging debris, vegetation left standing, protected stream reserves, and any native animal that may have survived the initial thinning operation. Essentially, by the time the whole thinning process is over, the forest is just about ecologically dead. These thinning operations are carried out without any scientific research or peer review, and are not supported by traditional owners, conservationists, or the greater community. However, what's even more disturbing about these thinning operations is that they're endorsed and supported by the Greens' political party. According to the Greens, there's approximately 60,000 hectares of Jarrah forest ripe for thinning. The Greens refer to this type of forest as Jarrah thickets. And according to the Greens, these thickets require thinning and poisoning to help restore the forest back to its pre-European state. And the thinnings could be used by the Forest Products Commission to produce biochar, fuel biomass, or turn into industrial charcoal for the Fordenown silicon smelter. But this is nonsense. The Greens make a big deal about how to tackle climate change, yet they fail to acknowledge the important role native forest plays in combating global warming. The Greens are also aware there is no profit to be made from logging native forests. So why do they insist on feeding the bankrupt Forest Products Commission by allowing them to log the forest? The eucalyptus forests of WA are a resilient organism and of that alone they can recover well enough to again function as a vibrant ecosystem and begin to play an important role in helping combat climate change. We need every tree standing if we are serious about combating climate change. Please take a stand by calling for an immediate end to all logging, thinning and poisoning in the native forest. You can do this by making your vote count at the March state election.